Hi folks, I'm Mr. Fullerton and today I'd like to talk to you for a little bit about gravitational fields. Our goals are going to be to calculate gravitational field strength and to calculate the acceleration due to gravity. So let's dive right in. Gravity is a non-contact or a field force, meaning it acts at a distance. The objects don't actually touch each other for this force to be imparted from one object to another. The closer objects are to large masses, the more gravitational force they experience. Now one way to think about this is if we draw force vectors. For example, around the Earth here, we have a bunch of different vectors showing the force a particle would feel at various points. As you get closer and closer to the Earth, you have more dense field lines, meaning you would feel a stronger force. As you get further and further away from the Earth, the lines are less dense, meaning you would feel less of a force. We call this mental construct a gravitational field. It gives us an idea of what force an object would feel if it were placed at a specific point in space. The gravitational force it would feel. Now, the gravitational field strength we can figure out using Newton's law of universal gravitation as well as some of the things we already know. The gravitational force on an object is equal to capital G, the universal gravitational constant, times the mass of object 1, times the mass of object 2, divided by the square of the distance between them. And we also know the gravitational force is equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity. This is just Newton's second law, F equals MA. With a little bit of rearrangement, though, we can solve for the gravitational field strength. If Fg equals G, mass of object 1, mass of object 2 over R squared, let's say mass 1 is our test object, mass 2 is the object we want to know the gravitational field strength around. So that's going to be equal to M2G. In that case, those M2s are going to make a ratio of 1, and we will find that little g, the gravitational field strength, is equal to the universal gravitational constant times the object's mass that we want to know the gravitational field strength around divided by the square of the distance from the center of that mass to our test object. Now notice g we said is gravitational field strength but that's also what we called the acceleration due to gravity. If you look as well you can also see the units. We've talked about little g, the acceleration due to gravity, being measured in meters per second squared. But if we use this formula, fg equals mg, it's easy to solve for g and see that it's the force of gravity divided by the mass, which will be in units of newtons per kilogram. Newtons per kilogram are equivalent to a meter per second squared. We can prove this because a newton is a kilogram times a meter per second squared. So a newton per kilogram is a kilogram meter per second squared per kilogram. Our kilograms make a ratio of 1 and we get meter per second squared. So the acceleration due to gravity, little g, is also the gravitational field strength. And it can be measured in units of meters per second squared or newtons per kilogram. They're really the same thing. So, let's take a look at a sample problem. If we have an astronaut, a 100 kilogram astronaut, feeling a gravitational force of 700 newtons when placed in the gravitational field of a planet, what is the gravitational field strength at the location of the astronaut? Well, gravitational field strength, we can figure this out. The force of gravity, 700 newtons, equals mass times the gravitational field strength. Therefore, the gravitational field strength, little g, is going to be the force of gravity divided by the astronaut's mass, or 700 newtons, divided by 100 kilograms, which will be 7 newtons per kilogram. Very straightforward. Now we're asked for part b, what is the mass of the planet if the astronaut is 2 million, 2 times 10 to the 6 meters from its center? Also, fairly straightforward, realizing the force of gravity is g m1 m2 over r squared, Newton's law of universal gravitation. Let's solve for the mass of one of the objects. Let's call m1 the mass of the planet and mass 2 the mass of the astronaut. So m2, the mass of the planet, is going to be force of gravity times the square of the distance between the center of the planet and the astronaut divided by big G times the mass of the astronaut. 
or 700 newtons times 2 times 10 to the 6 meters squared all over big G 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newton meters squared per kilogram squared times the mass of the astronaut 100 kilograms which gives us a total mass of about 4.2 times 10 to the 23rd kilograms. A very big mass, but then again we're talking about planets, and planets have large masses. Let's take a look at another sample problem. What is the acceleration due to gravity at a location where a 15 kilogram mass weighs 45 newtons? Well, what do we know? The weight of the object, or the force of gravity on it, is 45 newtons. Mass is 15 kilograms. We can relate these using the formula force of gravity, or an object's weight, is mass times the acceleration due to gravity. Therefore, the acceleration due to gravity will be the force of gravity over the mass, or 45 newtons over 50 grams, for a total of 3 newtons per kilogram, which is 3 meters per second squared. Really straightforward, just using our understanding that a newton per kilogram is a meter per second squared. A 1,200 kilogram space vehicle travels at 4.8 meters per second along the level surface of Mars. If the gravitational field strength on the surface of Mars is 3.7 newtons per kilogram, the magnitude of the normal force acting on the vehicle is what? Well, realize that this vehicle has the force of gravity, its weight pulling down mg and the normal force pointing up. And because it's not accelerating Newton's second vertically, Newton's second law says that those have to be equal. They have to be balanced. There is no net force, no net acceleration on the object in the y direction. Therefore, realizing that the normal force must be equal to mass times the gravitational field strength. The mass of our object, our vehicle, is 1,200 kilograms. The gravitational field strength is 3.7 newtons per kilogram. Multiply that out, and I come out with a nice round 4,400 newtons for our normal force. Another problem, this one, Showing us a graph shows the relationship between gravitational force and the mass for objects near the surface of the Earth. And we're asked, what does the slope represent? Well, if you remember, slope is going to be rise over run. And in this case, our rise is going to be measured in gravitational force, Fg, and our run is in mass. So we can look for a relationship that involves force of gravity, Fg, and mass. So. I think right away, Fg equals Mg pops into my mind. And if I rearrange this to get Fg over M, I'm left with force of gravity divided by mass equals G. So the slope must be equal to the gravitational field strength or the acceleration due to gravity. So our answer there is going to be little g. Let's take a look at one more. A 2 kilogram object weighs 19.6 newtons on Earth. If the acceleration due to gravity on Mars is 3.71 meters per second squared, what is the object's mass on Mars? Ah, this is a trick question, because it tells us the mass of the object on Earth is 2 kilograms. What is the object's mass on Mars? Well, assuming pieces of the object haven't fallen away, or the object hasn't gained any extra mass, which usually isn't the case, it's the same object, mass remains constant. The weight of the object may change, the force of gravity on the object may change, but mass does not. So the mass on Mars is the same as the mass on Earth, 2 kilograms. Hopefully this was helpful. If you have more questions or are looking for more information, check out aplusphysics.com. Thanks, and have a great day.